Hey, Ali, how's it going? Good. How are you, Anthony? Good, good. Thanks for joining me today. Uh, excited to have you here and, and share your message with the Break the Twitch community. So thank you. Um, so you've got this great site called Everthrive. Uh, tell me about Everthrive and, and just like what it's all about. Break the Twitch. Yes, um, Everthrive I created a, a few years ago in 2015 as kind of a response to the detachment I see in society and the clinging to to things that really are, are not essential. So slowing down, embracing gratitude, simplifying, um, being present really. Those are things that are important to the Everthrive community. So that, that's basically kind of the gist of it. And then through posts, blog posts, photos, um, and recipes too, that's kind of, I'm getting a little bit into to health and, and food there, recipes as well. I, I try to um, help my, uh, my audience and the people I reach to kind of sift through life's white noise, as I say, and focus on what's really important. Awesome. So t tell me a little bit about your life when you started it, when you came up with this idea, what were you sort of, what were you sort of going through and thinking about at the time when you wanted to start exploring this stuff? Well, uh, in myself, as I said, I, I noticed a trend of just becoming distracted by things that just weren't necessary, um, whether they be social media, like Facebook, um, Instagram, just overly distracted by those things and also distracted by uh, consumerism and you know the mall and buying things um not just buying things but also wanting things and things are not really what you know life is made of in the end it's, it's the experiences it's the moments that define us so i was kind of noticing this in myself and a lot more in in others and um so that kind of propelled me to start ever thrive um so, yeah, and as a teacher, I notice a lot about just like the upcoming generation and how they are, you know, way too focused on the immediate, immediate gratification, uh, the next big thing, whether it's shoes or, or, you know, technology oriented, you know, these items. So just kind of focused on that and disengaging from people, you know. So much is lost when you disengage from people. So that like real world connection beyond mm -hmm. the screen, right? Yeah, empathy. People kind of lose that ability to to read emotion and to connect with people on an authentic playing field. That is lost um, when you're just distracted by these things, like in the immediate. Yeah. So we were uh, kind of chatting a little bit back and forth earlier about boredom and, and you just wrote this incredible, uh, super like just really uh, explicatory, I think is the word I'm looking for, um, like post on boredom. And, and it, it just like, it really got me excited because I believe so much that boredom is this beautiful thing that we don't really have much of anymore. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I think we, your message really resonated with me around what this is and why it's important. Tell me a little bit more about how this came up for you. Like, what, what does boredom mean to you and, and why have you been thinking about this? Well, boredom is something that we avoid, you know, intrinsically because it's, it's very kind of frustrating to be bored. And you kind of have to sit there with yourself and, and your thoughts and, you know, that can be pretty ad pretty agitating because it's it's kind of it stretches for a long period of time. It feels like you're you're facing just this huge immense you know span of time with just nothing. And we don't want that. You know, we we naturally like, okay, what can we do? You know, how can I not feel this? And and then we immediately go to those things that we gravitate towards for that quick, quick fix, like our phones, um, social media, um, you know, buying things, or even like just playing video games um, while you're waiting in line or something like that at the grocery store or, or anything. So we lose something if we do that, though. We, we're escaping that kind of like terrifying feeling of like almost like lonely, you know, it's like loneliness or sort of like desperation. We want to escape that. So we just have this quick fix. 
But it's in those moments of boredom that we actually can create something. You know, boredom is actually telling us a big message when we're bored. We need to kind of step back, take a break, slow down, and kind of just disconnect from, you know, the things that are kind of surrounding us so that we can figure out what boredom is actually telling us. So that that's kind of what my article is about, just the messages that we can kind of read through boredom and then change something about our lives so that we can be better because of it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That boredom, kind of how you're talking about it, really resonates with me in the sense that I, I talk about the twitch and, and this idea mm-hmm. of like this quick fix uh, um, solution to discomfort. And yeah. that discomfort, boredom, is uncomfortable. It really is. Especially because it's like, for me, I know when you start to slow down a little bit and you start to have a moment in between the things of life, right? Yeah. Uh, it, it seems like those are the times when we have a little bit of time to start processing, our brain starts going. I think it's why meditation can be so difficult uh, if you haven't ever really practiced it much before or, or even just like a meditative prayer, what, whatever your preference is. Um, right? Like, isn't that sort of boredom? Why people struggle to, to meditate? Cause you're just kind of yeah. sitting there with your own thoughts. I don't yeah. know. That, that is a type of boredom. And then you're sitting there with your own thoughts and you're, you know, you don't, a lot of us don't want to face those thoughts. We don't want to read what's in those thoughts because that is, that is tough work, you know, and trying to organize your thoughts, you know, in, in a way that's, conducive to some kind of output that's tough work right there that's why so many people can't really meditate you know on the first try or or practice yoga or anything that involves kind of like a silent contemplation yeah it's just that it's it's tough to be alone with ourselves so we'd rather just quickly you know distract ourselves with with something easy and we have all these things around us constantly now right it gets this constant sort of sort of thing mm-hmm. where it used to be harder, right? We'd have to get out the, the paintbrushes or, and get out the, the toys or the, whatever, the Lincoln Logs and build something. Yeah. And, and yeah. now it's just right here. We have this source of infinite, infinite inspiration. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, instant technology like cell phones, you know, mobile devices, they are helpful. You know, they are helpful, mm-hmm. but they are a hindrance in that they can disconnect us from from the people who are sitting right next to us. I mean, if there's a lull at the dinner table, or even if there isn't, um, people, teenagers, children, adults, everyone, they might just go to their cell phone. Like it might be, oh no, it's necessary to check my email right now. You know, we're, oh break, um, how many likes do I have on this Instagram post? Just just to check, you know? And uh, in that time that we do that, we could be doing the thinking to get us to somewhere new. Um, maybe solving an earlier problem from the day uh, that we kind of left because it was too tough at that time. And then we could take that time even later to kind of go back to it and see it in a fresh new light. So, yeah, these these quick distractors are, are a hindrance to figuring out what, what we can make of ourselves in these times where there's a lack of activity. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, that's, that's incredible. Um, it, it reminds me of this, you talking about this reminds me of uh, uh, like shower thoughts. Yeah. It's like there's this whole kind of uh, on Reddit, there's this whole community uh, just based around this idea of shower thoughts where you're in the shower and you have these weird like, you know, like these weird thoughts that you would never have anywhere else. And mm-hmm. it's because I think it's because it's one of the last places where you can't have your phone next to you. You can't, yeah. it's, it was one of the only places we're truly bored anymore. Uh-huh. Right? Isn't that, isn't that yeah. what it's kind that of That like? is correct. I mean, there's no way you can reach for a phone. I mean, there's no way you can reach for anything. So you have that possibility to actually think through something, have an idea that will take you somewhere. Yeah, I got to check that out. I didn't know. I'm not usually on Reddit. Um, I actually rarely go there. Maybe I should be checking that out more. Eh, you know, <laughs> there's some value to it, but it's, you know, it's, it's a, it can become a Twitch just like anything else. So I, I wouldn't say you're missing much. Yeah. Oh, okay. 
<laughs> yeah. So, yeah. so if someone wanted to, uh, let's just say, embrace the boredom, right? Like, mm-hmm. when we're younger, at least in my generation, I would say our generation, I would, I would think that when we were bored, we had it, it largely became a, a time of creation. We would have to mm-hmm. come up with something to do, whether it was outside or, or whatever. Um, mm-hmm. We had, you know, I had video games too and things like that, but, but if someone wants to embrace the boredom, like what, what are some things they could do or try to, to like really get into it and allow themselves some of that space to be bored and see what comes out of it? Yeah, well, embracing the boredom, experiencing being bored, uh, you can do a lot of different things. Um, one of those things is opening yourself up to um, connecting with, with people. So having a, a conversation that's not on a, a digital playing field and it doesn't have like eight different layers and, you know, you're not kind of like, you know, texting can become that. You can actually have a face-to-face meaningful conversation with your family, friends, uh, the person waiting next to you in the grocery line instead of just like going right to your phone and doing all that. You know, we, there's there's people around us all the time and um, we just don't maybe acknowledge them because we'd rather be in our in our personal kind of bubble and our personal agendas. So we can actually make new connections like that or or just practice the art of, of conversation if you want to put it that way. Um, another thing is, is, yes, creating something new, um, whether it be art, whether it be a solution to a, a, like an issue um, you know, with, with like a relationship or even uh, something that you're building in the in the home, like some kind of like a visit yourself situation. Like currently, our our drain to our master bed bathroom tub is completely clogged or something, and the mechanism isn't working. And you know, we we attacked it immediately right away. Like, how are we going to fix this? But we we couldn't really figure it out, so we put it aside. You know, kind of and started thinking more about what to do instead of just like doing it without thought, you know, and then we're much closer to, to fixing the problem um, by doing that. We haven't fixed the problem yet, so we have to dig a little bit deeper. But yeah, um, there's like a plethora of things that you can do um, at times when there's inactivity. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so solving some of those problems that that we might have not allowed the time or the space to actually get to uh, instead of just going in like and getting frustrated about it, Mm -hmm. uh, having some of those times to do a little research, do a little Mm -hmm. like thinking about it, about what could be going wrong. That's, I I, I love that. Uh, I love that idea as well. Well, you know, I I really so appreciate your perspective on this and, and uh, again, there's more, uh, there's more on the blog on break the twitch. Um, so I will put a link to the actual article in the description of this video as well. But Ali, I'd love for, for people to be able to find more about you and, and what you're doing with Ever, Ever Thrive. So um, where can people find you online and, and, and uh, more? Yeah, thank you. Um, well, Ever Thrive, you can find me and Ever Thrive at uh, everthrive.org. Um, and uh, I have a Facebook page as well under the same name. So you'd be facebook.com backslash ever thrive and have Instagram, Twitter, Twitter. I don't use Twitter too much. I kind of just the post recycle from Facebook. I I'm never on Twitter. So it's probably best to, to go to Facebook or, or the blog itself. All those um, sites are connected directly from the blog and uh, you can find me there. I post usually three times a month, maybe four times a month on the blog, but I do a lot of more like news articles and kind of like, um, short bursts on Facebook and Instagram. So it it would be good to, to meet you on that playing field as well. Yeah. Awesome. And I'll link to all of that as well in, in the description of this video as well. So you can find that and follow more from Allie. Well, Thank you so much uh, for your perspective, and and, uh, we'll talk to you soon here. Great. It was a pleasure. Thank you.